Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, just see a few other people in the waiting room, so I'm just admitting them now. Thanks, everyone, for being so patient, and thank you for joining us. A couple of other folks in the waiting room. We'll just give it one more minute. Great. Um, so I see there's just maybe one or two other people in the waiting room just making their way in. Um, so first of all, just want to welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me this morning from wherever you are, East Coast, West Coast. And um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Allison Wainick. I'm the new SMFM Director for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, I started in June and just had the good fortune to be working with uh, Carrie Wade and um, our committee, also our advisory group on this, uh, building this program out. And I believe, I don't know if you can see her on your screen, um, but Dr. Sarah Kilpatrick is one of our representatives from the Emerging Leaders Program Advisory Group also joining us today. Um, so I know we've got a half hour of our time, so I wanna sort of move things along. I do have some slides that I'll be sharing with you. Um, and then we'll take time for some questions and answers at the end if the slides, uh, um, haven't answered any of your questions so far. Um, so just bear with me one moment, just bringing up my slides now. And can everyone see the slides? Great. Okay, so first of all, as I said, welcome to the informational session. Um, I obviously always like to hear where folks have uh, heard about the program. You can always feel free to write that in the chat. Um, we are recording this session. So either if you have a colleague who um, wasn't able to join us today or you just want to refresh your memory, we will be loading this up on the website afterwards as well as my slides. Um, so uh, as I said, I'm Allison Wienick, the new Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. My email address is here, as is my work and mobile numbers. And of course, please feel free to reach out to me. I like to say I have an open Zoom policy. Um, so I'm always, uh, always uh, looking forward to speaking with people about the program. Um, and this program, we are, you know, thanks to sponsorship by Janssen, we're able to provide this program for free uh, to our members. So uh, again, really appreciative of Janssen for their generosity um, over the years. So our uh, ELP, Emerging Leaders Program Advisory Group members, as I mentioned, Dr. Sarah Kilpatrick is on the phone joining us from the West Coast. Thank you so much. Um, and this is really a cross section of representatives from various committees uh, at SMFM so that we have really thoughtful input uh, into this program. And we've been meeting monthly for a, for a while now, um, developing everything from what the program looks like to what some of the requirements are, um, the application itself, and then obviously folks who will be reviewing um, the applications and, and sort of moving, moving forward and continuing to guide the program. So um, thank you to Sarah for all her time um, in helping us develop this program so thoughtfully um, and so attentively. Uh, oh, great. Oh, I love seeing this. Uh, folks uh, that have you know, heard by word of mouth about the program, um, I appreciate you sharing that. Go back to here. Oops. All right, so um, high level, I think some of you may have seen what some of the objectives um, of the program are. Um, you know, really it's to uh, develop a pipeline of diverse um, and inclusive, uh, being inclusive and having representative leadership um, ultimately to matriculate onto our committees, onto our leadership, having a diversity of voices, perspectives, opinions, uh, geographic location, um, practice setting, um, and really everything else that sort of runs the gamut. Um, so some folks have asked me, you know, what, what really does this program entail? And what we aim to have is personalized leadership development plans for the five to seven folks that are selected, um, learning about self-advocacy, communication, navigating conflict, um, developing personalized development plans, 
also to, to receive things like press, social media, and advocacy training. Uh, again, mentioned specifically the matriculation onto SMFM committees that are of interest um, to folks. This is specifically to sort of also be an ambassadorship type program to really understand all the inner workings of SMFM and, and you know, having our help in guiding you there. Um, doing mentor match, basically pairing you with the mentor throughout your time um, of the program, and then hopefully, obviously, beyond that. Uh, networking, we really hope that this group will be cohesive and, um, you know, develop close bonds, and we're also going to focus on some, you know, sort of uh, team building activities as well. Um, so, you know, if you ever have questions in the future, maybe you'll reach out to your fellow ELP, um, you know, class and say, hey, I have a question about this clinical program, this cl clinical issue, or hey, I wanted to know, you know, what you're thinking of joining as far as committees next year or whatever that might be. But we really want to build a sense of community, ambassadorship, and connection. Um, and a big part of that, we realize, is ongoing touch points with the SMFM staff um, as alumni. So in, in other words, keeping in touch with us every, every year um, and helping you connect with committees and with other SMFM opportunities. Um, Right, so um, if you haven't already applied, you may wonder, so where can I find the application? Um, you can either visit smfm.org backslash equity, or you can see on the webpage here, you would go to about us and this click down menu would appear and then you would click onto diversity and inclusion. And then it will bring you to this landing page uh, that tells a little bit more about the program and um, will also allow you to click on to the actual application itself. Um, other things there are obviously the, the link for today's Zoom session, which will then be replaced by um, the copy of this presentation that we're doing, as well as our slides. And then uh, if you haven't had a chance to click on that yet, um, this is what the first page of the application looks like. Um, so we, we um, I also like to go through the criteria for applicants. Um, three to seven years post fellowship, um, and obviously have an interest in developing leadership skills. Um, must be a current member of SMFM, and um, avail availability to participate in our in-person sessions is also a pretty key. Um, so we know that our first event will be taking place Monday, June sixth through Wednesday, June eighth, and then we also have some mid-October dates that we also will be meeting in person, and then some other touch points will be virtual. Um, so did want to obviously point that out. Um, we also ask for you to upload your most recent copy of your CV. We'll ask a few questions just related to um, the program and, and some, so we have the opportunity to learn a little bit more about you. And then we do also ask some demographic information. And a lot of folks will say, you know, I'm seeing this a lot more with SMFM of asking about demographic information. And for us, that's really about um, transparency and understanding um, the folks that are more about the folks that are applying for programs and more about the folks who actually make it onto programs or committees or anything. Um, so that's a big part of, um, of our, our own uh, recognition of ourselves. Without transparency, it's hard to have accountability. So um, thanks for helping us with that. <coughs> then just quickly walking through some of the timelines. Um, the application deadline is Friday, February 11th at midnight. Uh, we anticipate having notifications to all the applicants by Friday, March 26th, one way or the other. Um, the program would start in a virtual capacity probably in uh, April or May, just a little bit of lead into our first in-person um, event in June. And that event is, uh, is going to be in California. So if that helps a little as you're mentally preparing for the application and, um, and in hopes of making it to the program. We would also then have a virtual touch point over the summer. And then in mid-October, again, we would have another in-person event that's about two and a half days long. Um, and that would be in Washington, DC. So um, for our whoever our ELPs are, uh, hopefully split between the different coasts, we kind of want to be able to accommodate everybody. And then the graduation would take place at the 2023 annual meeting. And for this first class, that will be the graduation. And then for classes moving forward, that would be both a graduation and then also a, um, a reunion. So again, we're keeping up those touch points with anybody that's coming through the program. 
So um, at this point, I know a couple of you have just joined, but um, I definitely um, welcome some questions at this point from the audience and I can always go back in the slides. Um, you can either type them in or obviously feel free to take yourself off of mute and, um, and uh, just ask away. Hey, Allison, can I make a couple comments? Please. So first of all, um, you all should know how incredible both Allison and Carrie are in terms of um, this whole effort for diversity and inclusion and, uh, and uh, particularly Carrie, uh, who I've worked with in other areas, they're, they're both fantastic. Allison has just done an incredible pro program with this as she just stepped into this new job. So they're very approachable. I don't want you to, I don't want to ruin their emails, uh, inbox, but they're both very approachable. Secondly, I think this is really going to be a terrific program. And as you all know, SMFM has now become a huge organization and it's very hard, even at your this level, post three to seven years from fellowship, um, you all are in your careers. It's, it can be very hard to quote break in. And I think um, it's, it's a busy meeting, people go to that meeting, they all have connections, they all wanna see their friends, et cetera, et cetera. And as a person that doesn't fit into that group, it, it can feel very awkward and it can be hard to get into um, this leadership path. And the committees, you all wanna be on committees, it's, it's very rare they get new members. So I think this is a great onboarding into the leadership um, ascendance in SMFM. So I think it's gonna be a terrific program. And, I just wanted to say all that. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Does anyone have any other questions? I see a couple in the chat. Um, uh, Carrie, uh, thank you for pointing out again that all expenses associated with the program, so your airfare, your hotel, your food, everything are covered by SMFM. So this is a free program to anybody that is applying. Um, and we're really pleased to be able to offer that. Um, thanks to the sponsorship by Janssen. Uh, let's see, I see some new messages coming in. Uh, people in private practice eligible. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we, we are hoping for a variety of, um, of you know, whether you're research or uh, clinical practice, we are looking for that sort of diversity as well. Um, yeah, maternity leave time in person meeting in June. Um, it, it is hard. We aren't offering right now the programs virtually. So being able to participate in person um, is uh, one of the one of the requirements at this time. Um, and so how many people will be accepted to the program? We're looking for five to seven um, folks who um, who will be accepted into the program. Um, I know that as of last week, we had approximately I want to say 26 applications. Um, so for those obviously who are uh, who are turning in your applications, um, it, there's there's a robust a robust applicant pool, which we're very excited for. Obviously, this first year um, out of the gates, is the curriculum similar to that of the SMFN leadership course? Um, actually, it's it's not. Let me um, let me go back to a few slides ago. Okay, um, so. Aside from, I would say, best practices of leadership management skills, at least for the folks that um, we're, we're, and we're still finalizing our faculty at the moment, um, we're looking at somewhat different skills, as we said, navigating um, conflict or difficult conversations, um, self-advocacy and self-sustainability, um, recognizing that folks coming to the program may be from some minoritized groups, not necessarily everybody applying or coming into the program. Um, what about communication skills as well. So it's a slightly different, um, different flavor. Um, and that will be more so at the June event. At the fall event, um, we imagine doing more things like learning how to work with the media, look, learning about social media, learning how to do um, legislative advocacy, um, and, uh, you know, trying to do some hill visits, of course, hoping things are in person by then. Um, but slightly different skills than what you would learn in the traditional leadership academy. Um, so a little bit different there. Um, I see a few more questions. Let me go back. Um, so who chooses the candidates? Yeah, so we have a cross-cutting group of, um, 
our adv advisory committee here, um, and they will be kindly and graciously reviewing uh, the obviously I anticipate many applications that we'll be receiving. Um, and so we hope to have those, uh, or we will have those results and those notifications going out by March 26, because obviously we'll have to do the turnaround pretty quickly to get everybody booked for their flights and hotels for the June event. Um, uh, let's see, did I miss anything else? Um, this one might be it. And yes, for those who, um, who have joined later, we will be putting this up on the SMFM website under smfm.org backslash equity um, so that you can you know, go back and, and view this as many times as you like. I'll also be putting the slides up there. And, and you know, if, if all else fails, just shoot me an email and I'm happy to um, either send you the presentation or the file or answer any questions. Um, so no problem at all. Um, where in California will the first meeting be held? I believe it's outside of LA, uh, maybe about half hour outside of LA. I know Sarah, you've, you, you're familiar with that uh, particular yeah, uh, spot. Ojai is where it was going to be, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's about, that's about, uh, about an, well, nothing is a half hour in LA. So it's about an hour. <laughs> If you're flying, if you're coming from the airport, it's probably going to be more like an hour and a half, maybe even two, because the airport's on the south side of LA and Ojai's on the north side. But it's a beautiful drive once you get out of LA. <laughs> yeah, vote for for the scenic drive there. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. So I see a few people have asked that particular question. Um, let me go back. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, how many people? As I think we mentioned, five to seven people. Um, Private practice is eligible. Um, a question here about assume that somebody already serving on an SMFM committee does not exclude one from applying. I don't think we've necessarily covered that, but I don't, I don't think that that would preclude anybody from applying. So certainly feel free. Uh, I think it's Jamie. Still feel free to um, submit your application. We, um, we would always love to have um, folks join this program. Um, Let's see, and again, just reminding folks that all expenses are associate, uh, associated with this are covered by SMFM. So you don't have to worry about the hotels, the, the, um, your travel or anything like that. It will all be covered um, through the generosity um, of our grant. And there has been some uh, promotion of this uh, on the website and on social media. So definitely we're, we're spreading the word. Um, does anyone else have any other kinds of questions related to this or to the application? You can type it in the chat or feel free to um, unmute yourself. Hey, Allison, this is Carrie. I just dropped this in the chat, but wanted to make it super clear. Previous committee service is not required, in fact, we're really hopeful um, to bring some new faces into the Emerging Leaders Program. So if you have not served on an SMFM committee before um, and are thinking about this, please don't let that be a barrier to applying for the program. Other questions that we need to answer prepare ahead of time. Uh, so, um, so I believe that you can save your um, you can save your application. You don't have to do it all at one time. That first page will allow you to kind of be saved, I believe, in the system. And then the others, you can kind of answer, go back and answer. At least that was the way that we, um, the design was intended. Um, once you fill out your contact information, um, uh, and I'm trying to think, I don't know that I have them up right here, but I'm, I can also post those to the web just so folks can see that in advance as well. Um, just in case. <laughs> so let me just make a note of that. Um, and going back to, I think, um, Carrie, you were just saying, um, one of the big things, and Sarah, maybe you want to jump in here, um, was that we really, in, in asking some of these questions, we didn't really want to say you know, give us examples of your past leadership because we don't want that to be, you know, seen as a stumbling block, whether in your, you know, in your own mind or, or say, oh gosh, well, I'm not holding a specific title at my organization, you know, at my university, in my practice, um, you know, or I haven't, I haven't, you know, done something that I think is like that. 
um, we don't want that to be a barrier. We want for you to share an example of something you've done that you're proud of. So it's, it's, it's a very different kind of question than you may be used to. Um, I don't know, Sarah, if you want to jump in on that. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely, uh, absolutely right, um, uh, uh, Allison. Um, we're really trying to target um, individuals who are really interested in leadership ultimately, uh, both within potentially SMFM and in the rest of their career. Um, so we didn't want, and so we were interested in people who hadn't yet potentially done as much as they wanted to. And that, so that's why we, we divide, devised that question in that way. Um, and um, uh, once again, the, the key, key focus here also is diversity in however you want to define diversity. So that's, that's an also an important aspect of this. So really, this is about opening doors um, uh, to uh, new individuals. And um, I also want to emphasize that someone asked this, but even if, if you've been on a committee, being on a committee is not a requirement and being on a committee is not an exclusion. I mean, so either e any relationship to or not to a committee, you can apply. Definitely. Thanks for that, Sarah. Any folks have anything that they want to ask? Don't be shy. We're all friends here. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything other, um, any other points to, to go back and, and sort of cover. I think uh, obviously the biggest point is that, the, um, is that the application is due on February 11th and we will be posting this to the web. But if you have any questions along the way, please, please don't hesitate to either pick up the phone or send me an email. I'm, I'm very responsive and eager to get um, to help people along with the applications. If you have any question you're just not quite sure about or quite sure what we're looking for, um, you know, I, I'm happy to answer anything and spend some time, um, some time with you so we can even, you know, set up a, a, a call if needed. Um, but hopefully between this and, um, and, and posting the recording, that will sort of answer all the questions. And I will put those questions up on the website as well. That's a, a, a great point, um, Dr. Sun. So I will, I will put that up there as well, just so folks are feel a little bit more prepared to answer those questions. Um, I believe that we, we said somewhere between 150 to 200 words per answer. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a whole, um, you know, dissertation or anything. We just really want to get to know the candidates a little bit better and um, just understand, um, you know, where folks are sort of coming from and their interest in the program and some of your goals, um, uh, you know, professionally, um, so that we can uh, use some of that information for those folks who are selected to be able to better pair you up for mentorship. So um, it, not every question is necessarily, oh, what are they going to say here? But it's, oh, how can we build this program around the applicant pool to best serve them? I mean, this is really a program designed for you, uh, not for us. And, and to add to that, we, we spent a lot of time figuring out these questions and we deliberately didn't want to make it too onerous. So we didn't want uh, it to be too much work to do that that was a barrier for people to apply as well, so. Most definitely. Great, well, I know we're, we're coming up on time here. Um, so I don't know if there's anything else you wanna add, Carrie or um, I've seen maybe some other folks from, from the group uh, have any other questions or any other things they want to share. Nothing more for me. Thanks, Allison. And thanks, Sarah. We're um, just really excited to launch this program this year and welcome this first class. And so as Allison mentioned, if you have questions, um, feel free to be in touch with any of us. We're happy to help. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you everybody for taking the time out of your afternoon to learn about this exciting program. We're really excited to roll this out this year. And obviously, um, you know, all the years coming in the future and building this network of alumni. So um, feel free to reach out and have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. And we look forward to receiving your applications. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye.